Texas fans have waited 10 months for the Tech rematch. Mac Brown and the Horns lost it all on that painful night in Lubbock. Colt McCoy and his teammates are primed for revenge in Austin. Justin Tucker, the ball on the tee for the Longhorns. Kick off to the goal line, and Eric Stevens, a running back we're going to see a lot of here tonight, finds a little bit of a crease and brings it out. Around the 29-yard line, there is a flag down on the opening kickoff. Big 12 officiating crew, and right away they've got the first flag. Tom Walker, you see in the white hat, is our referee here tonight. During the line, hold. And waiting for the third point. Now, Taylor Potts, I think we have to introduce him to the... Uh, to the country here tonight, Herbie. Yeah, he is a big, strong quarterback, 6'5", about 218 pounds. And with, with Mike Leach's system, it's not so much just about being big and strong-armed. It's about understanding the system. This is fourth year of Mike Leach's system, so he knows what to do with the ball, and he's coming off a great game last week against Rice where he threw seven touchdown passes. Massive offensive line, the big splits, two-point stance. They'll quickly retreat to pass block that slows down the rush about a second and a half and his first pass of the night is complete to Alex Torres a freshman from El Paso Texas so much for easing into the game for Mike Leach and his his quarterback on the road what timing there on the first throw by Potts and the receiver if you're wondering about Graham Harrell and Potts and how they compare we have been told by both sides, Leach and the Longhorns, that Potts probably has a little bit stronger downfield arm. They don't know if he quite has the touch that Harrell had. And one thing obviously missing, there's no Michael Crabtree. A oh, beautiful delivery. And uh, Herbie, you can see with the young man, it just doesn't take long to get out of there. And that was Detron Lewis, who was injured uh, as another flag comes down. Detron was injured a little bit of hamstring, but he's here tonight. And we've got our second flag of the night. And Robinson's indicating it's going to go against him. Walker says, I don't need he's your help, to young man. This I can do this. <laughs> Here's one. Personal foul. Offense for the 27. Second down. That's receiver Edward Britton who threw that flag. And it, it comes in late right here. Hits Muckleroy from behind. An obvious call right in front of the umpire. It's exactly what you can't do on the road after a little bit of rhythm, starting to establish yourself as an offense. But you're right, getting back to your comment about Taylor Potts. Strong arm in rhythm and has a lot of confidence in his ability to run this offense that we'll talk about this scheme here as the game goes on. Batch, big hole in the middle, rips it, and almost got the first down. Now there is a fine run before Curtis Brown's able to tackle it. Big splits up front, guard comes around, picks up a nice block, and that's what Lonnie Edwards as a guard leading has to be able to do tonight. This offense has to be able to establish just enough of a run game to make Will Muschamp and Texas's defense respect it. Oh, like stealing. Rush five, picked up Leong. He was a high school teammate at Abilene. Lyle Leong, a junior. Great chemistry. They're ready to go again here. But great chemistry with Leong. Gets up, makes a nice play, and a big first down. Look at the timing and the spacing by these wide receivers from Texas Tech. There's that wide receiver screen, put a couple of blockers out in front of him, see what Britton can do that time. So they're moving the ball around. That is one thing when you don't have a Michael Crabtree around. Muschamp knows that Potts can really spread the ball around. And that's a big thing that Mike Leach believes in, distribution. Not just about being throwing it to one guy, spread it around to all your receivers and make Will Muschamp and the Longhorns respect every aspect of this offense. But right now they have Texas's defense on their heels early in this drive.
time for the offensive line and on target again. Has he ever been accurate? And that is Franks with his first catch of the night. Taylor Potts right now just coming out and showing that he's again in command understanding this offense Brent it's about sp spreading the defense from sideline to sideline and creating matchups if they're going to give you easy throws underneath coverage you have to take them and Taylor Potts seeing the, the reads and making the right throws and back with the running play and that was Eric Stevens who returned the opening kickoff he is a freshman at Texas Tech he's from Mansfield Texas and we were told he's going to get a few chances here tonight they, they like his upside a lot already he's handled the ball twice now we've got a second down and nine coming up and Potts has already hit five different receivers in this game open bottle did he grab it on the way down? Yes, he did. What a great grab. Franks with his second catch of the night. The umpire right there had a beautiful view of it. His back was turned completely to us. But what fine concentration. Great job here by Franks. Leong right there, number 11, takes the linebacker out of the zone. And it's just a soft spot. That is a beauty. <laughs> That's a heck of an effort there. They'll probably take another look at it uh, upstairs just to make sure but uh, that was a circus grab wasn't it and uh, I am so impressed with a couple of things right away obviously the accuracy you all can see that at home but you get the feel that this ball gets out of there so fast Herbie yeah he, he does have an ability to do that I think I love about him Boy, what concentration you're right Earl Thomas comes up hits Franks and he just doesn't give up on it that's a, that's that's going to be interesting to see well, because that, let's, let's see I, I was waiting for a chance to take a shot at the National Football League, and I'm going to take it right now. I can't oh, believe that the Raiders catch. didn't score a touchdown. Really the field the catch is confirmed. Thank you very much. Yeah, Looked like a catch, felt like a catch, and the Raiders didn't get a touchdown. <laughs> when did the definition of a catch change? Remember now, I'm running back in the end. Oh, I shouldn't get carried away about this, but do you stick a ball across the plane? Touchdown. They make you handle it perfectly all the way down. That was what a you, great what catch. What are you, Raiders? Sure. What are you, Raiders fan? No, no. But yeah, let's get. I just that. want to get that off my chest. <laughs> okay, you got it. The tempo right now, I think, is what's really alarming for Texas's defense. They're obviously up tempo, no huddle, and Taylor Potts in command. Here's man-to-man -man coverage by Texas as a changeup. Third down and two. There was movement by the defense. Kendall on this right side. And he apparently was a drawn off. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Lonnie Edwards, an offensive lineman, guilty there. You know, Brought by, Kendall out cross. Just by having the replay and then having the penalty, to see if they're able to pick this third down up because they've lost some of that rhythm that they created by just going up quick to the line of scrimmage. Giving Texas's defense a chance to catch its breath. Potts goes to the one yard line. Double coverage that time, and uh, there was no chance for Britain. And there's a young man who's looking forward to this game. He's waited for this so long. The young Blake Gideon, the safety a year ago, who dropped that pop fly that would have been an interception. And Texas would have won that game over. He took a step. He told us the other day when we met with him that his problem was that he started to take off with the football instead of just concentrating on wrapping it up. His father called him. His father's a coach. Called him the next day. And he said, you've got 24 hours to get over. Now don't be selfish. And the young man Hello. has lived with it. 41 yards here for Matt Williams. That walk-on field goal kicker. And he puts the Red Raiders up by three. Were you impressed, Irby? Very impressed. Not only do they take the ball, but they drive down and get three points. Beautiful crowd tonight in Austin. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. Texas Tech versus Texas from Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. Fans, be sure to catch ESPN's College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Join Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit for two hours of features, insight, news, and analysis, getting you ready for all the day's action. Due to time constraints, we'll move ahead to further action after these messages. 
Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines is ready when you are. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. AT&T. Your world delivered. Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken. Just the chicken sandwich. And the all-new 2010 SRX. The Cadillac of crossovers. Those are some good-looking <laughs> horns right there now, aren't they? He's probably thinking, what, what are you doing with that light? <laughs> what are you doing? Now, uh, the officials on the field, they had it immediately that there was contact at the six-yard line. That's where uh, contact with the player. So the ball is spotted right there for Potts and the Red Raiders. If you just joined us on their first series, they drove down, kicked the field goal, and there's a penalty flag again. And uh, had a few of those. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense, number 78. Half the missile for the goal. Still first down. Brent, that first drive by Texas Tech was so impressive to be on the road with a quarterback starting for the first time on the road. What I would do to defend Mike Leach, if you're Will Muschamp, is you have to make some adjustments. And one of the things you have to do is the defensive backs have to eliminate the cushion that they're giving the Texas Tech wide receivers, make them fight to get off the line of scrimmage to disrupt the timing with Potts and the receivers. You saw Edwards leave the field. Uh, he's guilty of his second infraction of the night from the end zone. Fires a strike, and they slide out to the nine-yard line here on that first down. And that's Torres. That's his second kick. That's exactly what they did right there. Curtis Brown up close playing more bump coverage, and you have to do something. If you sit back and give Taylor Potts and this system a cushion, they find the holes every single time. On second down, floats it out of the end zone. Incomplete. Good pressure on Potts that time from Muckleroy, the outstanding linebacker there, number 38. They also brought Keenan Robinson, both linebackers. Muckleroy to the inside, a little bit of a stunt there. Brought R Robinson from the outside to the end, and that's what you want to see from Will Muschamp. Pressure, challenge these Texas Tech wide receivers, and try to get after Taylor Potts. See him up close to the line. Here comes pressure again. Pot stands tall. And I'll tell you, first of all, it was almost intercepted. Then on the ricochet, it was almost caught by Lewis. But that was Earl Thomas, the safety, who had the first crack at an interception on that pass. There's a blitz coming right from the over the inside receiver, and that's exactly who he starts to look up. Lewis gets a free release. That's what the quarterback is looking for. You see the other receivers are having to fight to get downfield. The quarterback, he's reading that as he gets the football. He's looking back to see which receiver is going to have the free release to make the easy throw. That time, a poor, good decision, just a poor throw. Now here's Shipley, very dangerous return man. Corona tries to hang in, he doesn't. This is returnable on the move. Here's Shipley at the 45-yard line. Looking daylight right up the seam now. Cuts through. Got to the 20 now. Gets over to the 10. The 5. End zone. Touchdown. Jordan Shipley. And almost. Bevo says, hey, easy there, big fella. I'm on your side. Six yard return. One that brought Bebo to his feet. Hunter Lawrence tacks it on. They're loving it in Austin. Shipley to the end zone, and you're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the number two Texas Longhorns. Due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. Well, this is the Coach's Trophy, presented by Dr. Pepper. It'll be awarded at the 2010 City. BCS National Championship game January 7th on ABC and uh, 
Boy, one team fell back a little bit today. It's not impossible now. It's only September for, for USC, but they're going to have to make up ground. Another team Ten -yard penalty struggling First down. tonight. BYU at home to Florida State. I think the last I heard, 30 to 14. So, chew on this one. Yes, sir. If we didn't have any preseason ratings yeah. and you threw out reputation, yep. wouldn't Miami be deserving oh, yeah. of a very high ranking oh, right yeah. now? Based on everybody else that we've seen. And Ja'Cory I mean, Harris, Florida, wouldn't Florida, he be very high on the Heisman he, Trophy yeah. list with it, what he's done? He, I think he predicted think? he's going to win the Heisman at the beginning of the year. Wow. The way he's playing right now and the way that team is starting to believe in him, they've got a lot of confidence. They look, they look real. Yeah. Remember, now Utah lost at Oregon today, too, so... Now they've moved Colt McCoy out to the top, and they ran Childs straight ahead. Daylight. Childs took charge of the uh, Longhorn version of the Wildcat and ran it right down the field for 34 yards. Uh, I love to see John Childs have a chance to make plays because he's willing to make the move to get on the field, out the wide receiver. Occasionally, they'll put him back there to give him this look, to give a defense this look, and you're talking about some serious speed from a former quarterback now playing wide receiver. Now they come back. McCoy under some McGee. And McCoy took the snap back on the shotgun, and they move it to the 20-yard line. I just love to see guys who are unselfish. And, and Childs was a guy who was sitting behind Colt McCoy, who's having so much success. And he actually approached the coaches and said, guys, can I move to wide receiver? I just want to get on the field and help this team out. To see him playing the way he is, helping his team, is a great thing for him. He had played wide receiver before becoming a quarterback in high school, as uh, McCoy is sacked by Bird. So we've come to the end of the first quarter. The Capitol Dome here in Austin on a Saturday night with the Longhorns leading 7-3 with Lisa Salters, Kirk Herbstreet. I'm Brett Musburger. Nice to have you along with us here tonight. Third down and 11. And the Horns are in Red Raider territory at the 26-yard line. Incomplete. Kirkendall, the intended receiver, the uh, slot man. There's another third down pass by Colt McCoy where he just, he's getting a little bit of pressure. He doesn't look like he's comfortable right now early in this football game. And I don't think it's just because of the pressure. I mean, he's used to dealing with pressure. See his footwork? That, that's just unlike Colt where he's throwing the football and he's off balance a bit. Interesting to see if there's a play maybe that can ignite him and get him to stop thinking. He looks like he's just thinking too much. 43-yard field goal for Hunter Lawrence. Makes it. Stay as perfect on the season. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the number two Texas Longhorns. Due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. Wonderful Saturday night here in Austin, Texas. One of the prime spots to watch a college football game. And low scoring. We did not expect to see only 13 points on the board. In fact, the only touchdown tonight has been a punt return. <laughs> Who would ever guess that with Mike Leach and this high-powered Texas offense? I can't remember three and out by the Red Raiders in that game last year in Lubbock. And maybe there was one that I don't remember. We had one early here tonight. 10-3. We've had two three and outs for him this evening. Box throws, and it is complete. I'm a little bit surprised that they're they're taking a shot, but uh, it's, again, this is t his kind of his uh, ideas. You're what surprised he does. that he's taking I, a after shot after the way he punted <laughs> on a fourth down inside <laughs> Texas territory. I'm expecting that's a, what he wanted the defense I, out there. I'm expecting a knee and get out of dodge. <laughs> Drops it off and finally finds the middle with Batch, and it's on the ground again. That's why. <laughs> I mean, just. Be happy, 10 to 3. Shut it down, hit the showers. You know Texas is going to attack the football. Is it really? Oh. 
Acho again. He's been all over the place. Well, there's the difference maker with that punt return. Shipley. And a half. 30 second timeout. Reset the clock to one second. Oh, you know, Texas <laughs> fans don't want to hear the word one second. That's what was left when Crabtree ripped into the end zone. Remember the crowd spilling out of the field a couple of times? Red Raiders were penalized on the kickoff. And, uh, what, Can I ask you, you know, something? That's a, go ahead. Look at, I, I'm, watch, I'm looking at his face and wondering what he's thinking about. Is this for stats? Is this? Is he going to do a, a flea flicker or a, a hook and lateral? Or is he just looking to help Taylor Potts maybe make a nice completion and get some more passing yards? You know, he's led the nation in passing offense <laughs> six of the last seven years. I think he is, just is said, it, can you find Michael Crabtree in the stands? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it up there. I want to see if this is a Hail Mary or just... just he spent a long time if he's saying take a knee. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> One second to go. Down seven. Second down. If anything, he is never orthodox. Trust me. Ah. <laughs> Did he fake it? There's finally a whistle. Kendall had him wrapped up. I think... He, his knee did not touch. His knee didn't touch. No. He was doing the Dan Marino dance. Oh, boy. Oh, mercy. Oh, it, his knee, Brent, you're exactly right. There's no question. That's what the conversation the, was over there. The old Dan Marino trick. Watch his right knee. Misses by 12 inches. Let's go down. Lisa, coach has got to be livid about that. Conversation with the uh, the officiating crew. And uh, take it away, Lisa. Thanks, Brent. Mike, what were you upset about in that last play? Oh, we never took a knee. We never took a knee, and they whistled it dead. We weren't down. I heard you tell your offense that the defense is doing its part, but you felt that they weren't doing theirs. What would what, you mean by that? Well, I think our defense is playing good. I, I think our defense is playing good, and I think that uh, offensively we just need to settle in. We're, you know, we do things in spurts, but, you know, we haven't done uh, anything really for the duration. We're explosive. We do some good things, and then there's always somebody, you know. All right. Thank you, Mike. We're at halftime here at Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. Fans, be sure to catch ESPN's College Game Day, built by the Home Depot every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Join Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit for two hours of features, insight, news, and analysis, getting you ready for all the day's action. Due to time constraints, we'll move ahead to further action after these messages. We welcome you back to Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. A 10-3 game, and the difference has been a punt return for a touchdown. And so my question is, uh, Kirk, can the offenses pick it up here in the second half? I, you know, I, I think the one thing that we can expect to see, I think, from both offenses, especially you assume Texas, is to be able to get into some rhythm. Colt McCoy struggled. Let's face it, I, I still look at Colt, and I think that there's some pressure there. I think he's feeling like he has to live up to certain expectations, and he just wasn't able to settle down. The offensive line didn't really help him, give him a lot of time consistently, and I think it really ultimately affected him. That was a Southwest Airlines playbook, and now Monroe will try to pick hole now. And Monroe with speed to the 34-yard line. And that is where they will put it in play. Our Pacific Life game summary as we take a look at the first half statistics. Seven negative rushing for Texas Tech, but only 54 for Texas. What do you make of the rushing in this game? I think if you're Texas, you should be concerned more about 54 than the minus seven. Remember, 32 of those yards were on one play where they got a, a big sack. So Texas, if Texas Tech is going to sit back here with a couple safeties, you have to be able to run the football. Newton is the running back. He catches the flare. 
And he is driven out of bounds about the 37 yard line. Now this trend has, has been going on all year with Colt McCoy struggling a bit in the first half. You can see the interceptions, all three of them have come in the first half, but he has settled down in the second half, and we'll see if he's able to get that rhythm going here. Oh, busted play. And on second and seven, he will throw it away. And third down is coming up. If you're wondering, Taylor Potts threw it 34 times in the first half for 163 yards, but no touchdowns and no interceptions. Now here's the third down coming up for the Horns. They spread the field. Man Shipley inside the Childs for the first down to the 48 yard line. Quick throws, getting the ball out and trying to get it on time. Childs, who's still kind of feeling his way as a wide receiver, moving from quarterback. And there's Colt McCoy showing the accuracy and that strong arm stepping into that throw. This time he'll go out to the left, it looks like. So Childs with his third Wildcat formation will take the direct snap. And this time he will hand off to the running back who crosses midfield, and that is Monroe as we check in down below with Lisa. Well, Brian, at halftime I asked Mac Brown why Colt McCoy doesn't look comfortable, and he said Colt's not comfortable, but our offense doesn't look comfortable either, but neither does theirs. He said, I spent all that time in pregame talking about how many points these teams could put on the board, and it hasn't come to pass. I said, what do you do to get Colt in a rhythm? He said he's won too many games for us. He knows what to do. I don't have to do anything. You know how he is. He said, just watch. He's going to get hot here this half. Monroe stayed in the game and took the handoff that time, and he is hit by Duncan. Well, this is a textbook tackle right in the middle of this defense by Brian Duncan. But how he gets low there. Monroe's got such good speed and explosiveness that Duncan just lowered his shoulder and put it right on D.J. Monroe for another third down here for Colt. Third and four at the Red Raider 46. Time complete for a first down. He puts it back in Shipley's hands. Anytime he gets to third and short, you can bet that, again, he's looking for Shipley. I know he hit Childs on the first one. I had circled Shipley because that's kind of his security blanket, especially when he's still trying to get that rhythm. Going without a huddle. Handing off to the young one back, Newton, that time. So they're alternating Monroe and Newton to start the second half. The running game complementing Colt McCoy is so important in this second half. Johnson comes in off the sideline. Play fake by McCoy, rolling to the left, and he is upended before he can get the first down by Duncan again. Duncan goes down. Looks like the ball comes out, but the ball definitely was came loose after hitting the ground. It looked like McCoy goes up, up in the air, has possession, and then once he hit the ground, the ball came out. Third down and five. Another first down. Shipley again moves the chains 25 yard line quick blitz there shipley and colt mccoy together on the same page good adjustment shipley's caught seven passes already here tonight and the timeout is going to be called by the red raiders defense well, the adjustment that greg davis made to try to get his offense not just colt mccoy in rhythm obviously the up tempo something you usually see from texas tech so we'll take a break. The Longhorns on a drive of seven. Do you remember this just before the half, the simulation? We want to thank the Big 12 because the replay booth officials came over and told us that by rule, once you simulate that, the play is dead. So kudos to Tom Walker and his umpire, John Mascarella because they were right on top of the rule book. 
So that was an illegal play once he simulates it, and that's why they blew the whistle. Running back that time was Young Newton. He crossed the 20-yard line for the Longhorns. This offensive line taking control here on this drive. That time, the big right tackle, Kyle Hicks, leading the way for Newton. Second down and four. End zone, touchdown, Newton. The young man who Coach Davis says doesn't impress you with his vertical, doesn't impress you with his speed, but there's a wow factor. This is wow. <laughs> How about the offensive line getting a big push, a 19-yard touchdown for Trey Newton, fin finishing off an 11-play drive, and that's how you get Colt McCoy and this offense in sync. You run the football. If Texas Tech is going to sit back with two safeties deep, you have to have that ability, and they took control up front. Lawrence tacks on the extra point. And it is a two touchdown advantage as Newton dashes into the end zone. Now it's up to Taylor Potts and the Red Raiders to get something going. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC presented by Southwest Airlines. The Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the number two Texas Longhorns. Due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. First down and 10 here for the Red Raiders. Play fake. Potts buys some time with it, and the ball is dropped. Sousa like would have had a big gain on that. And the last game without a pass touchdown under Mike Leach, 2006 at TCU, a school that always plays good D. Brent, they came out of the gate with that first drive. And since that point, they've not been able to do anything. They had 10 plays and 56 yards on that first drive. And since then, seven drives, five punts, a fumble, and then the end of the half. Complete to the 40 and thrown out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Britain. Well, Edward Britton is on the back side of this Texas Tech offense, and he has to be able to beat coverage like this from Shockey Brown. But this is a poor effort by number eight, Shockey Brown. Has to be able to make that play. It's okay to maybe give up the catch, but definitely have to make the tackle right after Britton makes that play. Flag. Another false start. Dead ball. Another penalty. False start. That is the offense number 77. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And Okafor, one of the guards, moving. And that is the fourth false start of this game. Goes back to that being on the road, struggling to build that continuity up front. You see this offense. Obviously, the opponents caught up a notch or two from their first two to tonight. First and 15, and that was complete just beyond the original line of scrimmage. Franks making the grab. Eight penalties against the Red Raiders here tonight, and three against Texas. Second down and eight. 12 men on the field. Now one of the receivers clears. Got him again. There's a penalty flag. Got him again. All Texas is doing is jumping. They're just giving, giving this offensive line Dead just ball. a ball. Ball start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Brandon Carter. They're just giving him a little movement. And because they can hear, and they're looking at the, they should be looking at the ball, not listening to a snap count. But the movement by Texas up front is. Creating a little anxiety for Texas Tech's O-line. Middle complete, but short of the first down. And again, Zuzelik. Talked about the adjustments that Texas made after giving up 
some big plays by Taylor Potts in the first drive, and it was pressure, and it was coming up, eliminating the cushion on the wide receivers, and that's what they're doing here. Look at the defensive backs up close to the line and challenging the timing of Potts and his receivers, and they'll bring pressure from this look. Hand off to Stevens for the 30-yard line. Now you know he's going for this one, right? Exactly. He's going for this one. In fact, he ran the football just to get a little bit closer to give his quarterback a better chance here on fourth down. Score on this drive puts him right back in it. But this is a big fourth down for the Red Raiders. He's got a soft corner at the top of the screen if he wants to take the easy throw. He took it, got the first down to the 24-yard line. Torres again. He recognized Curtis Brown, just like I saw, that he it, when he looked like he was going to snap the ball, Curtis Brown started to retreat in coverage before the ball was snapped, and that gave him the indication to make the easy throw to out to the outside. Comes back the other way, and 9 or 10 yards with Britton again. That's what you like to see from this offense. When this offense is in their own rhythm, a lot of times they're finding that screen coming from the outside, cutting back to the end. Give him nine, second down and one. Stevens stopped short of the first down. That was a fine tackle by Brown. third down and one Stevens remains the running back Stevens to the middle he's short of the first down it is fourth down Kendall Sergio yeah, Sergio Kendall with a huge play there on third and short I think he had a pretty good feel that because of the yardage that they were trying to pick up, and he, he just came down right now and took that running play away from Tech. He goes right straight ahead. He had been backing away from center, but that time they ran the quarterback sneak. He did not back back out to the shotgun. So Potts moves the chains himself. Brent, I think you're right. I think we're so used to him starting maybe under center and then falling back into the shotgun. He, I think he tried to catch Texas off guard. They defended him pretty well, but he got enough of a push there to pick up the first. Mike Leach says that Taylor Potts does as much at the line of scrimmage as any quarterback that he's ever had as far as making checks. Here they come. Against pressure, touchdown, Red Raiders. Leong, his high school buddy from Abilene. And the Red Raiders are right back in the thick of it here, midway through the third. That's exactly what you have to do to a defense that continues to bring pressure with blitzing and playing man-to-man. -man. Leong, who always seems to be in sync with Potts. Potts sees, sees the pressure, but he also sees a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He takes it, puts the ball exactly where Leong can make the catch, and Texas Tech is right back in his football game. Williams adds the extra point. It's a seven-point game again here in Austin. So both teams score touchdowns on their opening drives of this half. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the number two Texas Longhorns. Due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. Meanwhile, here is Newton barging straight ahead for another first down as someone goes and loses a shoe on that play. 
Greg Davis has decided that he's going to put the game in the hands of Trey Newton and this big offensive line. And I bet he challenged them at halftime. This is the second drive that we've seen where Colt McCoy is handing the football off to Trey Newton. And the Texas offensive line is finally getting a push up front. There's Greg Davis right in the middle. And somewhere Nate is saying, that's my boy. Number 23, the son of big Nate Newton. A little flare pass out to the sideline, and that's Buckner, his second catch of the night. Dewhurst, shorthanded defensively. It's possible that this Red Raider defense will wear down here in the second half. But I think what Texas is seeing are these safeties being back. Second down and 13. Diving for the touchdown. Check it. Knee is going to be down on the one. Check it. But they're really playing off the safeties, whether the safeties are up or they're back. They've been running the football to give them that look. And just when they lull them to sleep and think that it's about running the football, it's like more maybe cramping there. They try to hit a seam and split them with a big tall receiver and Dan Buckner at 6'4", 215 pounds and a perfectly thrown ball that time by Colt McCoy. They've had so much success here to start this second half running the football. This time these safeties start to maybe think about the run and they keep them honest by throwing the football. And you go back to that decision on the onside kick attempt and starting this drive inside Texas Tech territory. Cody Johnson is the back who comes in inside the five yard line. They'll go to the jumbo look here for Mac Brown. <laughs> look at, I think Colt starting next week just needs to put John Childs in there a little bit more in the first half he's a, he's become a early in this year his second half numbers are astounding Antoine Cobb will be one of the fullbacks and uh, we look down on this uh, beautiful scene I was asked by some Texas officials what we thought about the uh, the new look stadium and it's one of the best in the country isn't it and we thank MetLife for providing the dramatic coverage here MetLife has the protection you need for the most important ifs in your life. Visit MetLife.com today. Texas Memorial Stadium, Austin, Texas. And the Horns. With that jumbo backfield, move up behind McCoy. Johnson powers toward the end zone. No signal. There's the touchdown. So Cody Johnson's fourth rushing touchdown this year. Big Lamar Houston leading the way. I think it was that second effort there by Cody Johnson. It got him into the end zone. Big load coming through. He can get inside the five-yard line. Number 31 at 5'11", about 250 pounds. And a Waller, Texas, usually has a way of getting into that end zone. So Texas Tech right back where they started before they scored that touchdown and then failed to recover the onside kick. The Horns use the short field to their advantage. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. Texas Tech versus Texas from Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. Fans, be sure to catch ESPN's College Game Day, built by the Home Depot every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Join Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit for two hours of features, insight, news, and analysis, getting you ready for all the day's action. Due to time constraints, we'll move ahead to further action after these messages. We are back in Austin, Texas. Texas Tech and the number two ranked team in the country. A year ago, Texas was ranked number one when they went to Lubbock and Tech with a memorable upset. Here tonight, we start the final 15 minutes of regulation with the Longhorns leading, but only by seven. Third down and eight. 
Colt McCoy who's thrown for 163 yards but he has not thrown for a touchdown. Drops it over the middle on a crossing pattern to Shipley and he is short of the first down. Jordan Shipley again the go to man on third down these guys have worked so much with one another but look at Texas Tech you have a defensive back you have linebackers everybody trying to find where Shipley is and they had two, that time two defenders on him to take him away and leave him short of the first down Tucker backs up to punt on fourth and four Blake Gideon and Antoine Cobb Cobb the up back and uh, here is that rugby punt running off to the right and it will go out of bounds inside the five yard line a beautiful punt by Tucker Herbie take it to the Pacific life game summary my friend oh, well, we've had uh, an interesting uh, tale of two halves the first half looked like it was just going to be defensive football but these quarterbacks have settled down in the second half and Taylor Potts I, I, no matter what happens in this football game Taylor Potts has had a great football game on the road in front of this crowd with three new offensive linemen in the third quarter alone he was 12 of 14 with 150 yards and a couple touchdowns coach Mike Leach with a few final words as he trots out to the huddle 96 yards away from a tying touchdown noisy in closed in offensive line barking out where the defenders are in the end zone gets it off intercepted picked off at the 20 yard line touchdown Earl Thomas the one who was burned by Michael Crabtree a year ago and there's a penalty flag down and it looks like they may be calling him down one official is indicating that he's down at about the 20 yard line Taylor Potts looks to his left throwing off his back foot takes a bit of a chance and there's just you know, three three Texas defenders right in the middle of that defense it's a poor decision just when we talk about how wonderful he's playing he looked like he was definitely down it looks like he caught it when he was down didn't yeah. he Harvey? yep Boy. the review booth is going over this See how Acho kind of sealed off the receiver from getting to the spot that he was trying to be able to get because of the timing of it. He threw it before his receiver could get there, but he didn't he didn't have a chance to get through Acho. It's back on the 20-yard line. That's where the ball has been spotted pending this review. Field is confirmed. The player was down the 20-yard line. First down Texas. Asking Zuzalik like, what happened on that play. He just got walled off by the big linebacker Ancho. See if Texas goes right to the end zone here after the big turnover. Hand off to Newton. And you get the feeling that Trey Newton is becoming the go to running back as far as the Longhorns are concerned someone that they uh, they count on is we've got the referee sorting out this penalty holding offense number 64 10 yard penalty repeat first down that's Kyle Hicks they're pulling their guards around and leading the way for Trey Newton and Brent I agree with you I think there's something about Newton 
that when he's back there, it, it just seems to, to flow. You know, the coaches, I don't know if they can even put their finger on it. Yeah, Davis said he, he, just, he it, didn't it expect just, it, but he has a little bit of what he called yeah. the wow factor. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you who he compared him to, but... Oh, well, I know. I know okay. who he compared him to. Here's McCoy. Shipley on that screen. And he's down at the 20. Now, he said, listen, I don't think he's nearly as good there yet, but here's who he reminds me of. Is the fact the way he came out of school, not Ballyhooed, but he said Emmett Smith was like that when he came out of school in Florida and went to play for the Gators. Yeah, he's okay, but yeah. is he fast enough? Yeah. Can he make it in the NFL? Not fast and enough. And then you look up when he's getting more yards than anybody. And always, you know? always falling forward. Yeah. Never yeah. backwards. So we got the idea, and uh, I'm not going to try to put the hex on Nate no. son, I'll tell you that. Limit a Hall of Famer. Deflected, intercepted on the interception. Back to the 19 yard line. Brent, it's another high ball by Colt McCoy. Plenty of time, steps, makes the throw. Malcolm Williams probably should make the catch, but the ball is high. And that interception was DJ Johnson. Remember, we said they'd have to reach deep tonight yep. because uh, they were shorthanded. Well, that is DJ Johnson. He is a freshman, and he played right here in Austin, Texas, at State St. Stephen's Episcopal School, a freshman, and what a big moment for D.J. Johnson coming home and making the interception. Ball back in Potts' hands, 12.49 to go. Play fake in trouble. That's going to be, you know, intentional grounding if it isn't a fumble or a lateral. Chase, and now Potts is shaken up. I don't think he got outside of the pocket. No, I didn't either. I no, don't I see think, it. I think he got outside of about the guard, but he doesn't get outside of the pocket. Yeah, there's the flag finally comes down. There's no yeah. question. Yep. The, the horn's wisely going after it in case it's a lateral and a live ball. But Great timing that time by Muckleroy, the linebacker, one of the leaders of this defense coming up with a big play when the Longhorns defense really needs it. And all of a sudden, Taylor Potts and Texas Tech, after a great third quarter, their first couple plays here to start the fourth quarter have been their worst two plays of the game. Mike is complaining that the crowd made the call. Mike is complaining that the flag was not thrown. Uh, he'll see but to no avail too. because it was a good call. And a loss of 14 makes it second down and 24. Kendall jumped. Was he pulled again? Marlon Wynn reacted, but I think it's going to be on Sergio Kendall. He went all the way across the line. Offside, defense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. That's the sixth penalty on the horns for 51 yards. 11 penalties against Texas Tech for 78 yards here tonight. 24-17 now. 12.40 to go. Second down and 19 for Taylor Potts. Under pressure. Incomplete. And it was the heat again. Late hit here, Brent. They're going to get roughing the quarterback. You're right. They, they're bringing the pressure. But they, after the throw, it looked like Ancho came high. Might have been Randall, actually. Personal foul. Checking in on Personal foul. Defense number 38, unnecessary roughness. That penalty's That's declined. Right. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense number 91. It's a 15 yard penalty automatic first round. That's Randall. Yeah. This is the one on the quarterback after Potts threw the football. This is the one I saw right after the throw. It's like it's going to be an incompletion. He just stamps him to the ground. Mental error by the Longhorns here on a crucial drive for Texas Tech. So with the first down, the ball is moved back out to the 25. 12 and a half minutes to go. Pot 
Edwards sets the screen with Batch, and he is lit up. McElroy finishing up. McElroy starting to take over here. And again, he is one of the leaders, a guy who's played a lot of football in the Big 12, and a guy that I'm sure remembers last year's game very, very well. Second down and 12 for the Red Raiders. Kendall, ball is loose. Horns have recovered it if it's called a fumble. Acho comes up with the ball as Kendall jars it out of Potts' hands. Well, for all the people who have been wondering where Sergio Kendall has been, he has stepped up here on these last couple drives. He just goes right by Marlon Wynn with speed. This is the young man that they felt could replace Brian Arakpo. He moved from linebacker to defensive end. Look at the speed and the acceleration to get right by win. Charged the ball loose and the helmet loose from Taylor Potts. Did he hit him high with that helmet? Dead ball. Delay a game. Sideline violation, Texas. It's a five-yard penalty from the dead ball spot. First down. I, I have a question about that on that replay. And that is whether or not there was that helmet contact up high. I want to take another look at this and everybody look along with me. I want to watch the helmet now. We've seen some calls this year because of the new emphasis on the rule that have been probably not as bad as that. They're supposed to be called. emphasizing yep. that. Yep. Nevertheless, the Horns are given the ball at the 19-yard line. McCoy handing off to Newton for a couple of yards. trying to milk a little bit of clock right now. You know, Colt McCoy has a lot of leeway at the line of scrimmage, too. And as I said, when you're a quarterback, first thing that you're looking at besides the linebackers, you're looking at the safeties to dictate if you're going to throw the ball or run the football. There's a handoff to the young back again. Newton close to the first down. A couple yards still to go. vision that time by Trey Newton to be able to find a hole and pick up a few more yards here. You can see Texas went from a real high tempo most of this game where now they're just trying to slow it down and work that clock. There's the young running back. Twists and there's a penalty flag. That was Newton. We've already had 19 penalties. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the number two Texas Longhorns. Due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. Austin, Texas on a Saturday night. Beautiful scene. It's been a tough, tough Big 12 game. Look down now, and we've got third and goal for the Horns, up by seven. Empty set, a lot of times good for a quarterback draw for Colt McCoy, or he has Shipley off to his left in the slot. Four-man rush. McCoy delivers back of the end zone, touchdown. That is Buckner. Again flexed off that tight end spot on the right side of the line. 
And a tough matchup for the defense. This is tough on Brian Duncan, who's trying to wall off Buckner and not allow him to get behind it. But once Buckner got behind, Brian Duncan made it a very easy read and throw for Colt McCoy. Brent Venables is thinking right now about putting a safety or a corner on number four when they see him in Dallas. You can count on it. We've got a timeout. Horns back up by 14. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the number two Texas Longhorns. Due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. All right, Matt, and here uh, we had a hold on the uh, kickoff return, so they'll back it out 10 yards, and away we will go with Taylor Potts to see if he can get something going here, Herbie, in yep. the last nine minutes. Nine minutes, down by a couple scores, and remember the last two possessions have ended with a turnover. One play and an interception, three plays on a second drive, and a lost fumble. They've got to get something going. Remember the third quarter was great for Texas Tech. Four-man rush, and Kendall was there again. Almost took him down as we check in down below with Lisa. Well, hey, Brent, just to give you an idea of just how hard Taylor Potts got hit on that last Texas Tech possession, take a look at this. The hit knocked out one of his contact lenses before he was able to even go back into the game. He had to put that contact lens back in just so we can see. Brent? Yeah, and believe me, he's got one eye on Kendall. Where is number two coming from next? He has been a blur coming in. They double him this time. They hit the middle for a first and ten. So they did a good job of making sure that Mr. Kendall did not get to the quarterback before Leong, who has caught a couple of touchdown passes here tonight from his uh, former high school teammate, got his sixth pass of the evening. First down, Torres. Tough run after the catch, huh? Right, right now, looks like Will Muschamp. Going to mix it up the coverages, but he looks like he's willing to just try to keep everything in front of his defensive backs. Doesn't want to give up an easy one with a 14-point cushion with eight minutes to go. Quick to a wide receiver with a couple of blockers out in front. And the Red Raiders strike for another first down. And that is Britain. I think the danger with that philosophy with this kind of offense is they get down in the field in a hurry if you get conservative on the defensive side. So three plays, three first downs, and all three plays stop the clock. Here's Potts coming to the near side, wide open, close to another first and ten, and that is Franks. A little reminder to stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up coming right after this game. A lot of things happening in college football today. USC upset in Seattle by the Washington Huskies. That will be the lead. Second down and one. Stevens hold bursts across and battles to the 22 fine looking young running back Stevens is Stevens a good compliment to Baron Patch and again another first down clock stops to be able to move the sticks and before this the clock will even get, have a chance to get started again you already see Potts in this Texas Tech offense now getting close to the red zone and ready to go again from the 22 on a slant incomplete. Intended receiver was Britton. I think Potts is going to try to attack the middle of this Texas defense. Texas safeties are widening out because I think they were respecting the speed to the outside. Opens up a big void right in the middle of this defense, the back end. Rush was coming wide open. Touchdown. Walking in is Swindle. I 
mean, Swindle was all alone on the busted coverage. It's, it's a pick again in man-to-man -man coverage. Look at that. Right there, Aaron Williams gets picked because his receiver came down to the inside and it picked Williams. He couldn't get around Curtis Brown. Down goes Potts again. 22-yard touchdown. So the gunslinger from Abilene is not done yet. Here's Williams. Going to try to make it a seven, and we climb toward both teams scoring in the 30s right now. But uh, two minutes and 13 seconds, they get within a touchdown. Walking on into the end zone. Lots of time left. You're watching ESPN Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The Texas Tech Red Raiders versus the number two Texas Longhorns. Due to time constraints, we're moving ahead in our coverage. Second and seven. Childs slashes inside. Another first down. A tired Red Raider defense, and the Horns are moving back down the field. Nice block by James Kirkendall, but when the ball gets into the hands of John Childs, even though he's a former quarterback, to me he looks like a running back or a tailback with a football in his hands. You just try to find a space for him to catch the ball and show what he can do in the open field. Here's Newton. Close to another first down when he's tripped up. Some great blocking up front. Charlie Tanner, number 52. Look at that push that he got right there on the left side, pushing the defender to the right. Newton needs only 10 to get 100 tonight, but he's going to give one back that time as he was hit by Bird. Bird's been a fine tackler here tonight. And there was some confusion with the hurry up. Texas trying to catch Texas Tech off guard and Brump Bird sitting on the edge collapsed down was ready and I think expecting the run by Trey Newton big time play by number 20 need two for the first down Newton stoned helmets come flying that time and Whitlock Makes the stop and loses his helmet. Victor Hunter, number clutter. 52. Brent right in there with Colby Whitlock. The defensive uh, line. Last couple plays. Stepped up when they had to. Now they'll go for a field goal here. Sitting on a seven right now. Mack will make it a couple of score game. Hunter Lawrence made one from 43 yards out. Shipley is the hole. Long enough, 33 yarder, a 10 point Texas lead. So we are back with Texas holding a 34 24 lead on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. They have three minutes and 49 seconds to work with here in Austin. Down by a couple of scores now. Stevens has done a pretty good job of returning kickoffs. Justin Tucker with the ball on the tee, 30 yard line. Stevens coming up to the 10 yard line. Maybe down for 30. Well, flash forward's a new show coming on ABC this fall. Kirk, let us flash forward to your <laughs> top five for next week. Well, this, there's no business like show business. This is the top five for this week. Now, Lisa, you got to take USC out because they lost. Just throw them aside. Alabama won BYU history, but I got to move your Penn State Nittany Lions, not at three. Move Bama up to three. Penn State goes to four. No, no, girl, not yet. <laughs> Penn State's at four. We have a little surprise, maybe, at number five. We'll talk about that after yeah, this. Yeah, right play. after this snap. Here comes Potts. 
And throws 11 yards for a first down to Franks. And here comes number five, and I don't know if I'm alone on this. I'm fine. You like it? You I know, love you're, it. You're, you're, you agree with that, right? Finally, and, one and, and voter you, I And you agree made with. a point, if you ignore what you expected and just go by what you have seen. Exactly. How can Miami not have serious consideration as a top five team right now? 328 to go. Stevens to the 45 yard line. So Lisa did a great job. She with did. Him. I was very impressed. <laughs> We're gonna have to She's in charge of helmets them. every she week. Is. That was we do that every fantastic. week. Bring bring the U a helmet. Yeah, we'll bring the U next yeah, week. Sure. Okay, good. <laughs> Snapped out to the side. That's Leon. Remember the last drive because Texas sat back and almost a prevent defense took them just over two minutes. They're going to need a similar drive here with Taylor Potts. Got to get up to the line of scrimmage, quick snaps, and try to come up with a touchdown here to get it within a field goal. First down and ten. Near side. And that is another first down. Zuzalek brought it in. We've got a penalty flag down. Pass interference, offense number eight. The 15 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Repeat first down. And that's Franks. And Corey Franks was beating up Shockey Brown downfield to try to open it up underneath. See, he's blocking. The ball is still in the air, and he's trying to block Chalky Brown. That was a huge mistake there. A big gain for Texas Tech, moving the ball. And now they go all the way back to their own 37-yard line. Uh, first and 25, middle, deflected incomplete. What a reminder to stay tuned after the game for your late local news over most of these ABC stations. And over on ESPN, tune over to Sports Center for post-game analysis, as well as today's scores and highlights. And uh, I think I heard Reese Davis say that around midnight, they've got a full wrap-up of all the college action. And hard to believe that Dr. Lou stays up that late on a Saturday night. Second down, complete. To the 47 yard line, Swindle. He's cramping up too. That right calf. Nice long throw by Potts. The timing on his outcuts today have been such long, arcing throws, but they always seem to get there just in time for this receiver to make the catch before the defender can knock the ball away. Third down and nine for Taylor Potts. Moving in on the school record for completions in one night. Stevens stopped at the 46. Achu, Emmanuel Achu, a brilliant student, by the way, has a younger brother on the team, and he's got a high motor. He's a fine looking athlete. And at running the football keeps the clock moving. Leach is three of three on fourth down tonight. Need this one or it's back up the bus. Got a man. Incomplete. Coverage closed fast. Nolan Brewster, the son of the Minnesota Gopher football coach, comes in and breaks that up. This time, Texas brought the pressure that they brought most tonight. The ball's actually thrown very well. Despite the coverage, the ball gets in there, but you touched on it. The safety, the sophomore, Brewster comes in and separates Leong from the potential catch in a first down. That old freshman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so now in the victory formation, Colt McCoy, and with a minute 24 to go, Herbie, I want to ask you, uh, Big 12, as exciting as it was last year, uh, drop off a little in the excitement category. What's your feeling? I, I still think it's going to be a great race, and these teams, as we see them progress, I think people are giving up too much too early on Oklahoma. 
I think people are giving up too early on Oklahoma State. I think Texas Tech showed me anyway tonight that they're almost a forgotten team this year in the Big 12 South. They, they competed, I thought, pretty well in a hostile environment. Nebraska competed, probably played well enough to win in Blacksburg. I, I think this conference is, is going to be very similar to what we saw a year ago. And remember, Oklahoma goes to Lubbock yes. this year. <laughs> okay. Well, the biggest Dancing with the Stars cast ever assembled takes center stage. Kirk and his wife's favorite show. <laughs> 16 new stars. An epic season. The three-night live premiere events start Monday at 8, 7 central on ABC. Would you do that show if they ever asked you? Are you, you kidding me? I'd be a judge. <laughs> no, you wouldn't do it. You, you, would, you would advance at least. i give you three rounds. Three, uh, over under would be about three or four weeks. Beyonce, be my... <laughs> <laughs> Come a long way. Come a long way. Uh, look at that face over there. Now that's a lineman's face, isn't it? It's Brandon Brandon Carter. Face. It's like a wrestler. Yeah, he does. Like a, especially when he comes out on the field. Big smiles over here on the uh, on the Longhorn sideline. Well, this will this will help Mac Brown forget about. It what went down last year. I was absolutely amazed when one of the first things he said to us when we sat down at a meeting is how come you built up those guys running up the score last year and we lost those BCS rankings. And I said, excuse me? You know, yeah, yeah. I said, wait a minute. I don't care how many points you score. <laughs> Sometimes we kind of get caught up in the excitement of uh, the scores, the plays, the touchdowns, you know? Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do, isn't yeah. it? If you're on offense, <laughs> put the ball in the end zone. Yeah. You know what Lou Holt said last night? They talked to him, have you ever called a timeout? Isn't that what timeouts are for? Right. <laughs> By the way, you said Lou's going to be up late tonight on the scoreboard show I on ESPN. I heard, I heard a, a rumor that you're going to be joining us tonight, too. We're just warming up here, bro. We've we got about eight segments over on SportsCenter if you want to join us. <laughs> Uh, I love to. Yeah, yeah, I think you have back. a few other fans. <laughs> right? So there we have it. The rematch won by the Horns. But uh, I, I agree with Herbie that uh, Mike Leach and Texas Tech show tonight, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with before this Don't season's over. Off. Taylor Potts is a tough hombre. And the Horns are on track. You know, October 17th, Oklahoma in Dallas. Let's go down to Lisa. First half, what changed for you guys in the second half offensively? It's got to be consistent. You know, give Texas Tech credit. They came out here and played great. We knew they would. Uh, we started conference play. Each week's, a, each week's a test, each week's a battle. But, you know, I, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to play tonight. It's, it's been amazing. You didn't look entirely comfortable in that first half. Why weren't you comfortable? Well, they're, we're, they're switching up some things. We weren't playing as well and being consistent like we should. Hey, give our defense credit. They played lights out. That second half turned into a shootout, which was what we expected all along. When did you know you had enough points? Hey, you never do against Texas Tech. You never know when you have enough points. You know, we made, we made two turnovers we shouldn't have had, uh, but we kept fighting, and that, that shows the character of our team. We're going to fight till the end. Now, Matt Brown has told you that he wants you to relax and have fun. Obviously, you won, so you're feeling good about this, but what's it going to take for you to feel comfortable and good for four quarters? Uh, we just got to continue to work. You know, we have a lot of seniors on offense. We got to feed off the defense and uh, stop turning the ball over. We'll be good. All right. Thanks a lot, Cole. Congratulations. Thank you. Frank. All right. Colt McCoy tonight, 24 of 34 for 205 yards, a touchdown and those two interceptions.